Hey guys, Shanti Phillips here with my September 5th DVD update, where I talk about all the DVDs and Blu-rays I've gotten over the last two weeks or so. And like I always say, guys, if you enjoy these updates, definitely give this video a thumbs up. Leave me comments below on what you guys saw the titles I checked out, any future titles coming up that you guys would like me to review for the updates, and some of the things you guys have checked out recently. Now, the first one I got from Shout Factory Screen Factory line. And originally, I was just going to talk about it, you know, just you know, to review it now, it's kind of really sad because, you know, the director, Wes Craven, just passed away less than a week ago. And he's one of those directors, too, that I have followed and been a fan of forever. You know, I've always been into horror films ever since I was a little kid. Always watched his movies, People Under the Stairs, was one, I think one of the earliest ones I had ever seen. I think even before Nightmare on, on Elm Street. But he's one of those kind of people that has been, you know, copied so often. And there never will be another Wes Craven. There really won't. There will be people who try to emulate him, but there never will be. He's never made a movie that I didn't like. Um, and this is the movie from Shock Factory. This is the collector's edition of Shocker, which is one of the ones that he's done, which is kind of lesser known, like slightly lesser known, but right above uh, Deadly Friend, which is another one which desperately needs a Blu-ray release now. I hope somebody puts it out soon. But this is Shocker, which is another one, like I said, it's a slightly lesser known movie that he did. And it's, um, the movie's basically, though, about this guy who's going around killing people with a serial killer. And this one kid ends up starting to kind of see visions and these dreams of him going and, you know, kind of basically like seeing the guy going and killing these people. And he's able to actually identify who the killer is. He actually sees the location of where he is. He sees the place that he works. So the cops end up going to his place and end up arresting him. But then ends up, the guy ends up, you know, can't, they can't hold him in jail, they don't have enough evidence, and something gets all screwed up. He ends up going out and killing the guy's girlfriend, and then it becomes a whole terrible thing, and the, the killer ends up getting put away in jail because they actually can convict him of this thing. He gets put into jail, and the guy is like crazy, and he's doing these kind of spells in his jail cell, and like kind of putting electrocutor things in his arms, and trying to basically, you see him doing something with electricity, he basically ends up getting electrocuted, comes back to life, doesn't die, and becomes like this electric energy going around, possessing people, and that's essentially what it is, is him going around possessing these people, going from people to people, and he's going to like a kid, and old people, and all these different characters. It's a really cool concept, and especially stuff too when he goes into like the TV world. It's kind of like an early before Stay Tuned, but like a TV world thing before that. Um, but it's a pretty cool movie. Not his all-time, like my all-time favorite movie of his ever, but I really did like it. It's one I had not seen in such a long time, but it has on here a commentary with Wes Craven, um, some new interviews, and, you know, uh, the, in, the interviews with the guy who plays Shocker, uh, interview with the actress who plays the girlfriend, who actually, it was pretty cool they got her to do that, because she has kind of, hasn't been seen in anywhere in a long time, so it's cool when they get people that you, you know, haven't seen in years, because she kind of, like, retired from acting early on, and I don't know why, but, like, that's sometimes that people do that, they kind of disappear, but, you know, there's an interview with her, and a bunch of other stuff on here as well. But great new transfer on this. A cool Wes Craven one that people I feel like not as many people have seen. Like I said, too, I'm keeping my fingers crossed, too. We finally get a Blu-ray release of uh, Deadly Friend as well. Uh, the next one, and this is one that I was really interested in seeing this because it has Eric Warheim in it. Right, and John Heater, especially to see John Heater in this because I've always been a fan of John Heater since the point on my always followed him. This is kind of an out there weird movie for him. And it's the director of this did that movie called Wrong Cops. I believe that's what it was called. I think that was what it was. But I w I'm going to warn you, this is an exceptionally strange movie, but an exceptionally strange movie that I like. I like exceptionally strange movies. This is one of those movies out of everything in the update I've thought about more than anything else. And I still am thinking about this movie. The certain sequences in this movie. Um, but the movie's basically, though, one of those movies where you don't know what is real and, you know, what is, if it's a dream or if it's a, a movie within a movie or what it is. But it's basically John Heater's character works as, like, this kind of TV host wearing this weird costume. He's always itching himself and has all these terrible itches and thinks he's got a rash. And, you know, he, no one believes that he has a rash because no one can see it. And there's a, this one character who's the camera guy filming John Heater's character, and he's trying to pitch this screenplay for this uh, movie that he wants to do about the TVs that take over people's minds, makes their brains explode. And the guy who he's pitching it to is like, oh, I like the idea, but what's the sound that happens when the TVs take over the people and makes their blood brains explode and the blood come out of their face. And the whole movie is him, the guy, saying to the guy that if you could find the proper sound when you're dying, 
when the people die, what that sound is, I'll make the movie. So it's kind of about him making the movie, and Eric Warheimer's character, you know, from Tim and Eric, is in this movie, having these weird dreams of him driving a kind of a like a war car dressed in a transvestite, and and then he's seeing people in real life. You don't know what's real, and this one girl, find, this kid who finds this videotape inside of a pig, and when you're wondering what's inside that, what's going to be on the tape. As you can tell, I was super obsessed with this movie. Loved actually seeing what was on the tape. Uh, you know, John Glover's in this movie. Always a fan of him from, you know, Ed and his dead mother. Uh, Gremlins 2, a bunch of different stuff, Meet the Hollowheads, but an exceptionally amazing, weird movie that I absolutely love, but it's not going to be for everybody, um, but I would definitely check it out. I, I liked it. Uh, the next one is Astron 6's new film, The Editor, which is kind of done all as a, like a giallo uh, Italian kind of spoof, and they did a really good job on so many aspects of this, you know, I've watched so many Italian horror movies and, you know, cannibal horror movies and slashers and all these kind of movies like this, down with the lighting was done amazingly, but the movie's basically about this editor who is editing together this kind of really bad movie and kind of knows it's terrible. He's editing it why the film is producing the movie. So you see the actors and stuff like that that are in the movie and people start dying off on the set and fingers are being pointed to him and they're thinking that he has something to do with it. And it's kind of wondering who is the killer and who is killing these people on the set? Is it the editor? Who, who Could it be someone else around him? Could it be one of the cast members that's really mad that his lines are being cut and, you know, and he wants to get a bigger role in the movie? But they've done such an amazing job with the aspects of making it seem like an Italian movie with you know, dubbing it over, with the kind of off-dubbing, because you know, all the movies in Italy in the 70s and 80s were all kind of ADR'd. That's kind of the way they did it. So it kind of, they did that. They also did that stuff, too, where they have some characters not dubbed. Like, even they did that in Italian movies when they would have, like, an American actor that was kind of famous, and he would actually record his voice. Sometimes he didn't. They even did that, where, like, one guy wasn't dubbed, but everybody else was. Like, to, down to that T of making it super perfect. I mean, it has a bunch of different people in this. Pazel Horror, who was in the Nurse movie. You know, Nurse 3D was in this movie. Um, Lawrence Harvey from, you know, Human Centipede 2 and 3. But, uh, you know, and Udo Kier. Very, very cool, well done, practical effects movie as well. Has a here a commentary, uh, making of documentary featurettes and deleted scenes, but very, very cool, weird movie and uh, really well done for making it seem like what it was supposed to be. The next one, this is one I had never seen before from, you know, uh, Screen Factory. Um, and I don't know how I never watched this before. I think I might have even owned a DVD of this before. It was like that other one I think that Shot Factory is going to put out, like Ghost House, which I'm interested in seeing. It's another one that I had never seen before. Um, but this, like I said, this is another one I never saw. It's called The Legacy. And the movie's basically about um, these two, this couple that, that are going to Europe for this interior design job. They want to, they're kind of going there, but then they, their car ends up breaking down the side of the road. And they end up getting picked up by this guy, this real rich guy in this kind of nice car, and he says, oh, I'll take you back to my house, and we'll call a tow truck and get it all figured out. They end up getting there, and they go, oh, there's no, no tow trucks around right now. Wait till tomorrow, and we'll find you a rental car the next day. And they basically end up kind of stuck in this house, and you see all these characters starting to come in. You're not really sure what they're there for, what's going on, and it kind of has a vibe of, like, Clue mixed with, like, uh, like a haunted house movie, but not really a haunted house movie. But people are like dying off, and you're kind of wondering who's killing them and what is doing this. Is this a force? What is it? There's also like a character upstairs in a bed the whole time with this ring. It's a very weird movie. A lot of people have complaints about the movie for like the music, saying that the music doesn't totally fit. And I kind of feel like at times it does, at times it doesn't. It some of the music is kind of like like a TV movie feel to it. But then the scenes in the water, like in the pool scene, was really, really cool music. But some of the stuff, it kind of needed more of a gothic kind of feel with the music, I thought, a little bit. It was missing some of that a little bit. But it was a pretty cool movie. Pretty creepy, though, trying to figure out what was going on with this movie. Has it here a new transfer, new interviews with special effects artists, and then a trailer and TV spot. Uh, the next one from Lion's Gate. I saw this one in theaters as well. It's one of those movies that, you know, I shed a few tears to and really like this movie. It's, you know, Blake Lively in the movie. Harrison Ford and Ellen Burstyn is in this as well. It's called The Age of Adeline. And the movie's basically about this woman who, went, I think she was like 
Yeah, she was 29, and she ends up getting in an accident and gets struck by lightning in the car. A car flips into the lake, gets struck by lightning, and something ends up happening and makes her so she does not age. So years and years go by, and she doesn't age, and she's kind of gotten used to this. And it's kind of the problems of what she's doing because she has to kind of move around all the time, and she has all these kind of problems with her IDs and people. She basically can't be around people because, like, all of her friends start looking older and becoming, you know, middle aged and stuff like that. Like, going, how, how do you look still look the same? What is going on with like? No one understands, and it gets to the point where she has to just start disappearing. And there's, um, you know, she has to kind of leave her boyfriend. She leaves her character, you know, Harrison Ford's character when she's a young, when he's a young man, and you know, he wants to try to propose to her. She can't, doesn't know what to do. She ends up leaving him. She's kind of going around leaving all kinds of different people, and this is her in modern time, kind of, after all these people have gotten so much older, kind of not knowing what to do, and, you know, you're seeing her daughter when played by Ellen Burstyn when she's an old woman, and it's, it's a really, really well-made movie that I really liked, especially, too, when she sees Harrison Ford as an old man, and seeing him now, I just, I, I was one of those movies that I really, really, really liked this a lot, it has on here a commentary track with the director, uh, some featurettes on the movie, and, you know, discovering young Karras and Ford, you know, how they found him uh, in deleted scenes. Because they did a good job, too, on finding the young versions of them. I really like this one. If you like those kind of movies, too, that are kind of about people not aging or these kind of long stories that go on like this, I would definitely recommend this. I, th I thought it was a really good and prepared cry a bit. Uh, the next one from Lionsgate as well is American Heist. This has Hayden Christensen and Adrian Brody. And Hayden Christensen, I hadn't seen him in a while. Like, sometimes I, it's one of those kind of people you kind of forget about a little bit. You know, I always remember from, you know, the Star Wars movies, and then he was in that one movie, it's like a horror movie, and one movie that was kind of cool that people, I feel like I didn't talk about much, it was kind of cool, called Awake. Uh, I think it might have been, I can't remember if it was Jessica Alba in that, or who was in that, but I remember that was kind of a cool movie. But this is called American Heist, and this is about Hayden Christensen and Adrian Burry, or these brothers, and uh, there was some kind of thing that they committed, and... Adrian Brody kind of took the rap for it and got it put in jail for it. He was in, in jail for a number of years for it. And he ends up just getting out of jail. And they're kind of about them coming back together. And even though he just got out of jail, they kind of want to plan this huge, big heist together. And it's kind of them trying to put together this huge, bank, you know, big heist. They're stealing all this money and kind of what they're trying to do. But it's kind of like they're afraid, too, that they're going to end up back in jail. But they kind of want to have enough money so they can kind of not worry about things. So it's that kind of a movie, like a pretty... It was a pretty well-made heist movie. I thought that, you know, performance and everything else was, was good in this. has on here, though, uh, creating a complex caper film, pulling off American Heist featurette. But a pretty cool, well-made, you know, film about them, you know, putting together this huge heist. Uh, the next one from uh, Lionsgate is The Furious 7, you know, which is the new, uh, newest Fast and Furious, which you may not believe this, but I have not really seen any of the other ones. You know, I think I've seen, like, clips of them. I remember the first one came out, like, like when I was in like driver's ed, I believe, because like I didn't, I tried driver's ed then, but then I didn't actually drive yet, because like I think I was like, I don't remember if I was like exactly the age people take driver's ed then or not, but I remember like I got kind of scared away from it, and didn't actually drive then. I remember though, people were seeing the first movie, or maybe it was the second or third one. I can't remember exactly what it was, but I remember people were all like, them going, you know, just because you're seeing that doesn't mean you need to speed like that. Because every time you see these kind of movies, I remember people leave the theaters and you see them like driving out. They're really fast. I don't know if anyone else has ever noticed that. But anytime I see a movie about like fast cars, people always leave the theater really fast. But this is, you know, Furious 7. I know, I, I've always had, I always wanted to admit that, that I've noticed that. But this is Furious 7. This has the extended cut as well as the theatrical version. But I was interested in really seeing this for two reasons, because, you know, it's Paul Walker's last film, and, you know, there was portions of the movie that didn't get finished, so it was, like, interested in seeing how they were going to complete it, and also to see James Wan, who directed, you know, who's always done horror films, you know, um, the Insidious films, Dead Silence, Conjuring, I really wanted to see him do an action film, I thought he did a really good job in this. Uh, the movie, though, is basically, though, about, I, I can only explain it as well as I can, because, like I said, I haven't seen all the other ones, so I don't know, but it's kind of, uh, the Rock's character has ended up getting into an accident. He's in the hospital the whole time. And Jason Statham is this one guy who's kind of after the group of all of them. And they're trying to steal back this one car with this big de this device that they want. It's kind of the whole mission to get it back. Like I said, it's kind of hard for me to explain it when you haven't seen the other ones. All I can say was it was really well done. And I do need to watch the other ones. I don't know why I haven't seen the other ones. But it has one here. Extended scenes. Uh, deleted scenes. The cars of Fast and Furious. Tower jumps. Inside fight. 
uh, music videos, um, a bunch of different stuff on his. But this is, a, like I said, I really like this for what it was. Um, and it was one of the best, you know, action movies I've seen in a long time. And I pretty much see it, like, watch all of them. I even watched that Transporter Reloaded last one. It was actually all right in a kind of a cringy way. But uh, the next one is, um, you know, from uh, Disney, and it's Disney Nature's Monkey Kingdom. And, um, you know, this one is narrated by Tina Fey. It has on here, you know, see what it takes to capture the making of the film uh, on set in Monkey Kingdom with Jane Goodall. Uh, you know, a conservation story. But the movie's basically, though, about this real area. And it kind of reminded me almost like where the Jungle Book was, where, like, the one kingdom where the gorilla was, and they're all dancing. I kind of like that. And I also was thinking a bit of Congo a bit for some reason. But it's basically like this kingdom of monkeys where they all kind of live together out in the middle of, like, I think it was out in, like, Asia. I don't exactly know. Yeah, South Asia. And it's kind of all these monkeys together. And it's following around, which is kind of interesting, too, because, like, I feel like, School doesn't teach you anything. Because, like, the stuff they show in these kind of documentaries and stuff, you don't hear about any of this. I think that's... Sometimes I think it's better just to watch documentaries and things like that because you figure out way more. But the movie's basically showing how they have, like, these trees there and these areas where they have, like, the hierarchy of monkeys, like the king monkey, the middle monkey, the monkey on the bottom that kind of has to eat, like, the leftovers and the scraps and stuff like that. And it follows around the character of monkey who's just... He has to basically eat the scraps and seeing how she's pushed around and the hierarchy of them. It was a really interesting thing. I, like I said, it's just amazing the stuff that you can learn you know, watching documentaries as opposed to school. I feel like I didn't take much away from school. I took away more from that and more from the documentaries I watched out of school. But uh, the next one from Ala Films, and I, like I've, always, I've been saying this a lot, I'm so glad that they are putting out this show. It's one of my all-time favorite, you know, cartoons and TV shows. Um, and they're actually going to be putting the third, 13th season out. I think it might be next month, the following month. And that's going to actually be on Blu-ray, which is pretty cool because I believe that was when they first started airing it in widescreen HD. This is King of the Hill, the complete 11th season. But this is one of my all-time favorite shows. This is from Olive Films. Um, you know, Olive Films has got so much stuff coming out next month, or this month, and uh, the end of this month and, and next month with a bunch of shot and video horror titles. But they've got, like, Mannequin, Mannequin 2, uh, Dirty Work coming to Blu-ray. I can't wait for some of these ones coming up. But the movie, though, is basically about, you know, Hank Hill and his family and his son Bobby and his wife Peggy and Luann. It's basically just kind of, it's kind of, it's kind of, if you have never seen the show, it's not like a typical cartoon where kind of like over the top or things that happen. It's basically like a real show, just like a regular show but animated. All done by Mike Judd, who created Beavis and Butthead. Great episodes on this one. One of my favorite ones was when the snake gets loose. Um, Bobby ends up getting a snake, and it gets a gigantic snake that goes down the toilets, and they have to try and get him back. And the uh, the team that wants to has to clean them up is trying to make a big thing out of it, and have this whole bill and try and get all this work with it. It's a, this is just a, such a great fun show. If you're a fan of this, definitely please support the show so you know all the other seasons keep coming out. Um, but it has you know all of the the 11th season. Uh, the next one from Arrow Video. This is a UK release, but it's a region uh, free edition. Or it's region, yeah, so it's a region free edition. And this is of Madman, you know, and it's a little look inside. But, you know, it has a booklet about the movie inside of it and the discs. But the Madman is a really pretty cool. It also has a reversible artwork, too, which is the original um cover as well, the original artwork for Madman. But this one is basically, if you guys have not seen this one, I always think of it as like kind of like a summer camp movie, but it was, you know, it's, it is a summer camp movie, but it kind of starts abruptly and it is all, it was filmed during the winter. So like they're kind of wearing jackets and trying not to look cold and they kind of filmed it like, there was this thing about it, it was kind of funny, it was like a winter film, summer camp movie about these kids at camp and the counselors, and, but they're getting stalked by, they get told this story about Madman Mars, and of course Madman Mars comes and starts killing them off one by one. There's some amazing sequences in this with Madman Mars in the trees, looking down at that one shot up in the trees, one like one of the coolest shots in history, looking down. But it has on here a brand new 4K transfer on this, um, you know, the documentary that Dead Pit did, a whole bunch of different features on this one. Really cool, less, lesser seen, um, you know, slasher film, and Galen Ross, who is, you know, the star of Dawn of the Dead, is in this. Uh, the next one, Mirror Arrow UK as well, this is Reason Free as well, and this is Nightmare City. This is a way better edition 
in the Rorio release because they actually went and put on here um, both they basically they found the original print of the movie but it had all kinds of scratches and stuff but it looks good but it has a lot of negative damage and stuff that was not fixable but they also found another print of the movie but it's not as sharp so they actually included both editions of this so it's pretty cool that they did this and there's a new interview on here with Eli Roth talking about the movie which is actually a pretty cool thing of him showing his DVDs and like some of the directors of other movies and talking about stuff he really knows that stuff and like I'd love if he did a video just showing his whole collection of stuff because you can tell he likes a lot of the weird things that I do but on here um, it has a booklet with you know pictures and stuff like that from the movie you know some screenshots and stuff like that um, but th here's an original. This is the cover that I always remember when it first came out, the DVD, this artwork, when it first came out. I think Anchor Bay put it out years ago, but it has, like I said, the transfers on this. But it's basically about this um, reporter that goes to cover this, this guy coming in on a plane. This plane comes down with all these kind of crazy zombies that come and take over the town. But it's kind of like smart zombies, more like infected kind of people like the crazies going around killing people. And he has to try and get his girlfriend back and survive. It's some really great sequences in this movie. Really, really cool one. And like I said, definitely a way, way better edition than the Ario. RO edition that came out maybe a year or two ago. Uh, the next one from Warner Brothers is Gotham, the complete first season. This is a show that I saw a whole lot at the gym because I always at the gym. It's one of the things that's always on the TV when I'm there. Um, I can explain it okay. I guess the best way to explain it is basically like young versions of the characters, like a young Penguin, a young early Bruce Wayne before he becomes Batman because the show is going to, you know, through, like, through the next season they're going to like more characters are going to start to come in. The characters are all starting to evolve a little bit. Like I believe the Joker is coming in the next season, and it's kind of set up too for Jada Pinkett Smith's character quite a bit as well. Um, but it's basically doing just like the young version of the characters in Gotham City, but you know, all shot very much like a movie. So it's like all kind of fits together. A lot of character actors were in the movie, in the, in the show as well. Like Jeffrey Combs was in an episode or two. Um, I think it's a pretty cool show though. It has on here though. Um, a bunch of featurettes on the movies, on the show, gag reel, uh, DC Comics at, at um, Comic-Con. But I really like this show. It's a really cool one. I definitely look forward to seeing the other season as well. Like I said, it's one I'm definitely going to be seeing at the gym. Uh, the next one from Magnet is a Pollyanna McIntosh's new movie, uh, The Bloodland. This is from Magnolia. This is basically about this couple. And they, where did they move to? They moved to a, a farmhouse and um, move out to a new farmhouse and it was basically foreclosed on because the owners of it, they couldn't afford to pay something off so they ended up getting this house for a really good price but they ended up moving together in this house and of course right when they get there somebody is stalking them. They start just hearing things, um, hearing things outside and the boyfriend ends up getting kidnapped. The movie's basically like what movie that takes place all in one night with um, you know Polly and McIntyre's character trying to, you know, to, trying to get away from these people and find out where her boyfriend is and if he's alive and and they were all kind of wearing uh, you know pig masks and all these kind of masks it kind of has a vibe of um, you know you're next it's not like a super super like gory kind of movie like that or like as much of a slasher as much as more of like a feel of like straw dogs a little bit mixed with you're next kind of vibe I thought that it was pretty good it, it, it wasn't it, it, it kind of stalls out a couple points in the movie but I did like aspects of it quite a bit though and the, the whole message of the whole movie, too, I thought was actually kind of interesting. I didn't get, though, how certain things about at the end when they reveal it and everything, how it would have still worked out, though. I feel like, I was like well, something else I think would have happened from them doing what, what you know, whatever they were doing. But I think it's worth watching, though. I really did think it was pretty interesting. It has on here, though, a making of the, the movie as well. Uh, the next one from Lionsgate, this is the American uh, version of, this, of the show. Um, I love the French one. Like the French one was one of those the few shows that I ever watched, where I watched the Blu-ray and then like watched every single episode in a day and a half. I pretty much like hardly even a day and a half. I just kept watching because I was like obsessed with it. And you know, for me too, it's something that's subtitled. I can't do that very often. I have really bad attention deficit and can't pay attention and you know all that kind of hyperactivity. And so I can't pay attention too well. And I did. Like, I was obsessed with the, the uh, French edition of this show. This is called The Returned, and this is the American version. Basically, though, the show was about, you know, and it was interesting to see, you know, the casting. And they cast a lot of the characters pretty similar to the looks and stuff of the French show. Um, it's basically, though, about characters that have died 
and you know not all kinds of from different times and things like that coming back to to life and they kind of don't remember how they died from the accidents they died or ways they died they come back and like wander back to their families wander back to and they kind of like the families are kind of freaked out by this and wondering how this happened and what they're going to do and kind of what the whole meaning to this is and why little by little more people start coming back it was it was interesting though, like I said to see the differences and things like that it has on here though inside the episode specials behind the scenes but it's definitely worth seeing um, it's worth two more for comparison reasons too if you're a really big fan of the original one it's still though even if you didn't see the original one this would still work and I still think it still was well made and everything like that but definitely watch, I would say, both if you, if you can. And start with the French one, though, because it's such a great show. Uh, the next one is a, from Lionsgate as well, and this is Power Rangers Trickster Treat. And this is four episodes. This is basically a compilation disc of episodes of Power Rangers that all are like based in like Halloween-type episodes. It has on here Raising Spirits, which is the Mega Force episodes. Trick or Treatster, which is Samurai, Super Samurai, which were the more recent episodes. You know, the, I think the Super Samurai was the most recent Mega Force might have been right before, I believe. Then it has Zed's Nightmare, Nightmare Mash, which is from Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, and then it came from Angel Grove, which is Zeo Rangers. So it's kind of cool collection of all, you know, four different ones. It's always cool too, like if you want to show the kids too, you can show them the early ones, and then you know some of the new ones as well. Like I said, it's basically though a combination of uh, Power Rangers episodes. Uh, the next one from Lionsgate as well is um, Pups United. This is featuring the voice of Rob Schneider. This was a kind of a silly one. I, I, and it has, you know, featuring internet sensation Jumpy the Dog, which I never heard of Jumpy the Dog. You know, I always know, you know, Grumpy Cat is the one I always think of when I think of, like, internet animals. But the movie is basically about these kids that are going and having this kind of soccer championship together. And, of course, like I, I to me, I love the fact that all these years later, they st like after Home Alone and those kind of movies, they still make like the movies with like the bumbling, foolish, idiot kind of characters. Like the two guys trying to do something, trying to steal something, and they still do it. And like, like they, you know, Remote was one of those ones that I always thought of as kind of like a copy of Home Alone. And I just love that they, they, it's still being made now, and kids still get to see these kind of movies because it's like some people might not think like movies that are like that exist anymore, but they do. And this one, like I said, it's Pop United. It's about these two bumbling kind of criminals who are trying to steal this trophy because there's a thing inside the trophy which is this video game that they're trying to get like the data for it. So they kind of like go to the soccer championship where there's all these dogs and try and you know, find a way to get this trophy, but of course the dogs are not going to take it, so the dogs like band together. It's just a really fun, silly one, and like the criminals were really ridiculous. You know, it's a fun movie for kids, though. It's just a really ridiculous, fun thing. Uh, the next one from Warner Brothers is Peanuts, the Emmy Honor Collection, which is like Emmy Honor Editions, and it has remastered editions of two Emmy winning and nine, you know, two Emmy winning episodes, and, and, nine Emmy nine T V specials, which is so funny to me to watch these in. Like it's one of those things where I haven't seen some of these episodes forever. Like the one when he goes to the circus, you know, Snoopy goes to the circus and ends up like working as like a dog in the show and ends up getting taken off with the circus and like I have not seen this movie this this episode in so long and I feel like I, I it's like weird when you watch something that you haven't seen it in such a long time and you kind of remember it. This weird deja vu and like I must have not seen this in like I don't even know how many years. I mean, like, my I was like, what, like four or five? And I remember, you know what I mean? I, 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 forever ago. Because when you think of, like, Peanuts, you always think of, um, to me, I always think of um, Bon Voyage, Charlie Brown, which is one of my all-time favorites, you know, and one of my favorite movies ever as a, as a kid. This is a really cool collection, though. Lesser-known ones, which is pretty cool, too, that I feel like not a lot of people have seen. But a really cool set. Uh, the next one from... Um, from Anchor Bay is The Walking Dead, the complete fifth season. This is one of the shows where I've only selectively seen certain episodes of the show, so me to try and talk about it is not that easy because I've only ever watched episodes here and there of the show, but it's been a cool show, though, from what I've seen. And they have a new spinoff show, which has just started, I think, like a week or two ago. I think the ratings was, like, the top ratings of, like, a show in, like, history. I think of, like, a cable show. But it has the new season of this show comes back October 11th. Um... But it has on here, though, feature the inside look of Walking Dead, the making of The Walking Dead, um, some on-set videos, like a day in the life of, one of, of two of the characters, auto-commentaries and deleted scenes in the show. But like, if you're a fan of the show, I would say definitely pick it up. This one, though, involves 
some of the stuff, though, where the character's trying to see if they can find a cure for this in Washington. But I would definitely recommend checking out. Like I said, I, I can't explain it too well because I've only selectively seen episodes. The next one, this is one that I really wanted to see from Edgar Bay. I've heard a lot of things about it. I saw it on a lot of lists, too, from people posting, like, the weirdest movies of this year, ones you've got to see. The director of this made Toad Road, which was a pretty cool, weird movie. And this one is called Felt, and it's basically, though, about this girl who is, like, going out on these dates and stuff with her friends, seeing, going out and seeing these guys and stuff, and she goes out in the middle of the woods and wears this really twisted costume that she's made of, like, this face and, like, a fake she puts on and they kind of prancing around in the trees and all this weird stuff going on like really weird imagery and odd stuff and climbing around and being weird with people and being really awkward it's such a weird awkward strange movie you can see like the I don't know, it's just that I, I like it. I like these weird, twisted movies. And this is weird and twisted. And she ends up meeting this guy that she kind of is going out with. And she's kind of real reserved with him. And, you know, there's going to be an ultimate outcome to everything, too, which is pretty interesting. And for, I, I mean, I knew what the outcome, I, I figured it out from the cover. I figured it out. Just I just knew for some reason. I don't even know why I knew it. I just knew it. I knew what the outcomes was going to be. But I, I, I like this movie. It was really, really, really extremely weird but I like this but it's, it's not going to be anyone everyone's cup of tea the next one is um, a doc you know from PBS it's a documentary from the American experience on the blackout and the blackout this is blackout was in 1973 and this is really well made documentary about the blackout in, in New York City about you know kind of showing old footage talking to people who were there for the blackout kind of what it was like for the, the night that it happened I think it might have gone a couple like a little over a night or two kind of about how hot it was and about the looting and how parts of New York City like never recovered because people basically went insane and were like stealing everything stealing TVs like everybody was doing it, it was kind of like they even made like a thing about this on like Beavis and Butthead and stuff like that I always remember things that kind of reference this happening but it was basically just a documentary about this, you know, the, how people got, you know, just look at the back at the people all who are rioting. But it's the things, the way when they show the aftermath of, math of the stores and how bad they destroyed things, it was insane how crazy things went. That's why I always fear, like, that was going to happen. Like, that one movie, too, The Trigger Effect, about the blackout, I think it might have been Los Angeles when the guy bought the gun. That was a really cool movie about a blackout. I feel like not a lot of people might have seen Um the next one from Severn Films is a it's a movie that has said that it has three different movies on it. It has um, you know Barbara Steele in Nightmare Nightmare Castle, Castle of Blood, Terror Creatures from the Grave. Um, and there are, you know new transfers in all of the all the movies. The really really good transfer though in the main film. The other ones are kind of more like 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 had like scratches and stuff like that to them. But it's but good transfers though because I feel like that's probably like the best transfer you're gonna ever see of these. Has on here too interviews with Barbara Steele, uh, a bunch of deleted scenes on the movies, new featurettes on the movies, a whole bunch of different stuff. You know, Severn really does an amazing job of really putting together great extras and things like that on their on their discs. But Nightmare Castle though is basically about these you know his husband whose wife is cheating on him with this other man and he ends up killing and torturing them and he ends up going with with this other woman. And then the woman ends up becoming haunted by the ghosts of them. And she's seeing all these crazy visions. And there's these great sequences of like slow motion of like stuff when they're seeing the you know, back of them killing them in the garden shed that they were in. Really cool kind of before it's time kind of stuff like that of the slow motion stuff like that. But this is a pretty cool one. I, like I said, I'd never seen these ones before. But very, very cool transfers on both of these movies. Um, definitely recommend them, though. I thought they were really cool fil films. I, I, might, I don't know if you might have saw one of the other ones before on there or not, the feet ones that were featured. The next one from Arts Plantation Films is The Summer House. This movie's kind of in the style of a movie like Happiness, like a Todd Sondes movie, like a character piece. It's basically about this one guy who is... You know, you know, it's risk of losing his business, and he's something went wrong with the money, and his friend ends up coming in and saying that he end up helping him out and kind of keep the business afloat. But then, you know, the friend end, ends up kind of having these bad things go on with him and the one son. It's a really I'm not going to get into too much about what's going on here, but it's definitely in the style of like happiness. It's a it's a well made character piece though, but really like heinous kind of stuff going on. It's a, oof that kind of a movie. 
but it has on here deleted scenes, cast and crew interviews, and a trailer. It was very well made and everything like that, but it's just definitely a movie that not everyone will really like. But it was, like I said, if you like happiness and that kind of vibe. Uh, the next one from Synapse Films is um, Legions of the Dead, Mortis, Morti Moritis, I think that's how you say it. This movie is kind of known for being banned in Italy, and the movie's basically, though, about, and this is really a tough watch, because it's really, like, brutal. It's like in the house on the last house on the left, but, like, you know, super violent. Like, I, I don't always like that kind of violent levels, like, women movies. Like, I just don't, I'm not a huge fan of that. But the movie's basically about these guys that are going out to this rave, and they ended up, you know, out in the middle of the woods, and they picked up these two um, girls that they were, you know, saying, oh, we're going to take you out to this rave. Of course, though, you know, find out very early on that they were basically taking them out there for no rave. They're basically taking out them to basically torture them and rape them and beat them up. And that's essentially what it is. But then there's these characters, because they did this in this graveyard out in the middle of the woods. And these characters are like these medieval characters basically are going to come back and get them. That's kind of what it is, is the build-up for when they come and get them. But it's super, super violent movie. It was well made, though. Um, good effects and everything like that. But... Not the kind of movie that I really gonna want to watch that much, to be honest. It was just like real. I don't know. I'm I'm real weird when it comes to that kind of brutal violence like that. It's, I just don't, I don't like it too much, to be honest. But it has on here uh, the original theatrical trailer, and reverse cover art. Um, the next one from Anchor Bay is David the Company. This is Aquarius, which I think might have been on Netflix. But I might have been wrong. It might have been on there first and then aired on TV. But it's Aquarius, the complete first season. This is kind of like a fictional show about Charles Manson and kind of before he became, you know, got caught. And it's kind of about um, this one girl who ends up going missing and David the Company is kind of brought in to try and find her and track her down where she is and kind of falling, falling into the... Uh, you know, Charles Manson's cult and one cop who kind of goes undercover and tries to get details and things like that about this cult. It was a pretty cool show. It was, you know, it was all set in like, uh, 1967, so right before the Shannon Tate murders and things like that. But it has on here uh, webisodes to look at the, the making of the, of the show. But it's a pretty cool show. I thought it was actually pretty well done. A pretty decent job, too, you know, with setting it in 1967. Uh, the next one is a zombie movie. This is from um, uh, Midnight Releasing. This is called Zombie Resurrection. It's essentially about basically right after a uh, it was like 15 months after a zombie outbreak. It's kind of like survivors together and these kind of army guys with them and like these prisoners and stuff. Kind of unique and some kind of odd characters kind of all together kind of out there kind of trying to like survive the zombies and they kind of get to this location and kind of lock themselves in there. Of course, all the zombies are out there coming after them. It's like an indie uh, zombie film set in the U. I think it was like it's all set in the UK. I, I thought it was pretty decent. There were some pretty decent effects in it. Some kind of silliness in it too. Some like silly characters and stuff. It has on here shooting the dead, the making of the the movie, and a trailer. And um, the last one is um, Blood Punch, and this is from Midnight Releasing as well. This is basically about this this kind of couple that these two characters ended up escaping from. A, uh, like a rehab center and they end up going out to this cabin out in the middle of the woods and the one boyfriend ends up tracking them down there and then they end up killing him but he ends up keeps on coming back so it's kind of about them killing him all these different ways and having these fights with him and like killing him eventually there's like becomes all these bodies of him around and it's kind of like that it was kind of remind me of that one I can't remember what that one was but when there, there's all like the characters it's one of those things though it's like like a reality where like they just won't stop coming back even though you've seen them. That's essentially what it was. Like the characters just continuously keep coming back. But I thought it was actually pretty well done and pretty decent production guys on this. Has them here on deleted scenes, outtakes, and test footage on it. But anyway though guys, that's all for this DVD Blu-ray update and I'll see you guys later.